Rivers. Layup is good. Welcome to the Ram Report with Tim Miles. Nothing good by Horna. Right down the lane. Throws it down. Hi and welcome to another edition of the Ram Report with head coach Tim Miles as we talk Colorado State men's and women's basketball. I'm your host Brian Roth and other Colorado State men going one and one here this week. They lost on the road at UNLV but bounced back with a big home win against Air Force. And Tim, you guys now sit at four and three after the first round robin set of Mountain West Conference play. Your thoughts on the conference schedule so far? Well, I think the depth of our conference is really um, Excellent. When you look at the, the, the difficult road games, uh, you know, Wyoming beats UNLV at home, yep. TCU beats Wyoming, uh, Boise and, and uh, uh, UNLV go to overtime, Boise and San Diego State, uh, Lockhorns. Uh, it's, it's the depth of our conference is really good and really impressive. Yeah, and it, it's like this every year, but it seems maybe even more pronounced this year. Winning on the road in the Mountain West Conference is, is not an easy thing to do. You guys tried to do that on Wednesday night at then number 11 UNLV. And tell you what, Run Rebels are pretty good in that building. Uh, Vegas basketball is, is back there at the TNM. Yeah, it was uh, it was like a Laker game. I mean, they had everybody there. Flavor Flav was up there, the whole deal. I man. heard that. Yeah, I, I heard it. I'm disappointed afterwards. Like. I missed him. I'm like, would, would you be able to pick Flavor well, we're Flav? We're going to lose by 15. He was on a Super Bowl commercial for crying out loud. But uh, I wouldn't be able to pick it. They'd no, have I to tell either. me. Yeah, no. I didn't even pick out Greg Maddox, and he was sitting right behind our bench. Was he really? Uh, a year ago. A year, a year ago. ago. A year ago. All right, All right. so back on task. <laughs> You know, uh, we were down at halftime, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 points. I really didn't feel like we played that poorly. Yeah. We kind of, you know, any mistake we made late in that half, they really made us pay. And then I thought we had a good opening to our second half and really got back in the ball game. Uh, but their transition was superior to anything we'd seen all year. Uh, uh, they were just, they shot the three really well too. And when you put UNLV at home, playing well, number 10 team in the country, uh, and they start shooting well and getting their running game going, you, you got a real problem on your hands. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody's going to win there in the regular season at the Thomas and Max. I, I, I really don't. I don't see San Diego State going in there, there either. But you, you look at your ball club and that big run you showed. Which, by the way, bodes well for the Mountain West Conference Tournament. Uh, yeah, I know. I, <laughs> and, you, you notice I said regular season because I can see you guys beating them down there yeah, in, the, yeah. in the conference tournament. Sure. It's a little more of a uh, you know, less partisan crowd uh, during the conference tournament. But, not yeah, not much. <laughs> it's it's the most interesting thing I've seen in a long time for a conference that is one of the best multiple bid conferences in the country to, you know, actually have a host site. It's kind of disillusioning, I think, for the student athletes, but it's not about the student athletes. No, of course, not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Uh, I Sorry, I had to just <laughs> that's right. that. Listen, yeah. you're you're more than welcome. That's why we bring the soapbox here to yeah, the show yeah. when you want to jump on it. I thought Greg Smith though played well for you down there. Uh, he he looked aggressive, and uh, Greg seems to do well in those games where you're going up against athletic long teams. Uh, Greg yeah. kind of fits, fits his mold. Yeah, Greg's been been really good that way, and and I thought he scored the ball well. Did a lot of very good things, and defensively wasn't too bad either. So uh, that that was a, a bright spot for us. There's no doubt about it. Everybody was talking about the three game stretch of uh, at New Mexico, home against San Diego State, at UNLV. And I, I know you always tacked on, you did it on this show a couple weeks ago. Don't forget about Air Force. That wraps up that little little span. So I know you were really concerned going into that Saturday afternoon affair with the Falcons, but boy, you guys came out and played one of your one of your best defensive games of the season. It's true. Our um, San Diego State at home, our last two home games, San Diego State and Air Force have been two of our best defensive performances of the year, which is good. We, we need to improve, and we have done solid in our league games. We haven't fouled as much, and we've really defended pretty well. Our offense hasn't clicked as well, probably because we're spending more energy on defense, uh, and, um, and rightfully so, uh, but we need that, that good balance. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I mentioned this to Pierce Hornung in, in our uh, radio what interview after the he? game. What number is he? Uh, 31? 31, maybe? all right. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about Pierce's performance here in a sec because uh, he, was, he was phenomenal. But I couldn't remember one time where you guys gave up a backdoor cut for, for a layup. And it might have happened. You've seen the film, but that's Air Force's game. They're usually able to get those back cuts and easy buckets, points in the paint. I don't remember that. I don't believe it happened, no. And uh, that's just really good alertness by our guys, good pressure on the ball. 
And, uh, and I think that Air Force got a little down. I think they kind of hung their heads a little bit when you know, we started to extend the lead a little bit. And anytime you kind of hang your head, you don't cut as hard on offense, you don't quite get to your defensive spots, you don't quite pressure the ball as much, you don't really hit the boards as hard. And that's just you know, them trying to find themselves too. And, and we've been there and uh, understand that. But at the same time, I have to credit our guys. I thought they were really sharp the whole night as a team defensively. And of course, Pierce was dominant. 23 points, 17 rebounds, both career highs, the 17 ties, a uh, career high on the rebounding side. I, I mean, what a dominant phenomenon. I mean, let's get out the, the, the thesaurus and, and go yeah. through how many different ways you can describe that. He, he was outstanding. There's no doubt about it. He, uh, yeah, I saw the player of the week came out again, and I always have this kind of pipe dream that maybe one of our guys will get it one of these weeks. And, and, and you know, Pierce was, you know, career high in points, career high in, in uh, rebounds, not a player of the week, of course, but, but at the same time, I mean, I, I wouldn't trade that guy for anybody in our league. I think our fans love him, uh, and I think it's a great deal that, um, uh, you know, he gets to be at a school where his dad graduated from and his brothers go here too, and it's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, but I think the signature play was when he took the three from the corner, hit off the back of the rim, he comes flying through the lane, grabs his own rebound, and goes back up and gets fouled. You could find about five of those, but that was quite a, a defining moment. And I thought, you know, Pierce was just one of those guys that, that refuses to, to um, be stopped. You know, I mean, when it comes to multiple efforts, a lot of people will go one direction on a rebound, get boxed out and stop. You know, and, and Pierce is gladly and eagerly making multiple efforts. Stop me here, you're gonna stop me there. Think you've stopped me twice, I'm gonna try and track it down and tip it out for a third time, which is why he fouls yeah. uh, too much. but. You know, I can live with some of that. Yeah, I, I've said this many times on, on our radio broadcast, and, and I'll say it again. Nobody on the court plays harder than Pierce Hornog. There might be other guys on the court playing just as hard. Nobody's playing harder than number four for Colorado State. All right, uh, we'll take a timeout here. When we come back, we'll introduce you to junior guard Jesse Carr. Also take a look ahead to the TCU game that looms coming up on Saturday. Stay with us here on the Ram Report. Can't get enough of the Rams? Get all the latest updates at csurams.com. Check out videos, analysis, breaking news, and more. csurams.com. Up here, there's something that makes the remarkable an inspirational thing. Taking our work with this out of the lab and putting it into these all over the world. Chasing tornadoes from the shadow of the Rockies. A special sensitivity that revolutionized an industry. All of this in a great Colorado town. It's an exciting place to live and learn! Colorado State University. Inspiration happens on higher ground. Twitter's great. Here's one. The Rams won and I got my painted stuff on TV last night. The bad news, this stuff ain't coming off and I've got a job interview. Are you Big Rammy? Yeah, that's me. You got a job interview today? Yeah, I gotta be there in an hour and I can't get this paint off. That's why we're here. Let's go, guys. Smile. Look him right in the eye. You got this. You can do it. Go get him. Let's go. <laughs> 43,000 CSU Ram alums call Denver home. Now it's easier for Denver Ram fans to stay connected with CSU. Visit the all new Colorado State University Denver Center, where all Ram alums will feel at home. You can make professional connections, enjoy events with other alumni. You can even show your Ram pride with all the best CSU fan gear. Stay connected with CSU. Visit us at 17th and Glen Arm or online at rams5280.colostate.edu. Welcome back here to the Ram Report, our weekly discussion of Colorado State basketball. Brian Roth back with Tim Miles. Well, before we talk about the TCU game, uh, one of the guys that I thought played outstanding basketball for you on uh, Saturday against the Air Force, Jesse Carr, who's not completely healthy right now. No, he's got a bone bruise in his heel, which is really painful. In fact, we thought we were going to shut him down, uh, not play him against Air Force, and then Kaipo went down, and so we had to play him in eight points, eight rebounds, four assists. Uh, you know, he's really been efficient for us all year. He's a young guy that's endured a lot of injuries. I mean, significant, serious injuries. You know, you break your pelvis, you crack your pelvis, that's pretty serious. And, and, and Jesse's had to kind of become a different player, and he's really done a good job this year being just rock solid for us. At the eight rebounds on Saturday against Air Force, marked a career high for junior Jesse Carr. Green into the forecourt, got it to Carr. Carr drives baseline inside, lays it up for two. 
Jesse Carr, when he can get in transition, he has another gear and he's a very good finisher at the rim. Went to Ainsworth High School in Nebraska, North Central Nebraska. It's a really small town and you know, my junior year I decided to come take a visit after being contacted by the coaches here at Colorado State. And you know, Coach Miles was new out here and so I wanted to see what this was all about. And, Came out here and kind of just fell in love with the place. Rams throw it in from the baseline, car right baseline, pull up in from 15. Let's I started go. at a young age and kind of always just went with it no matter what I was doing. I just played a lot of basketball. I just loved to play and would always play pickup games with my friends. And you know, I, there was days where I'd play about 12 hours sometimes if I could get my friends to keep going with me. You know, I think we've always kind of had an identity where we're going to outwork people. And I think when we do outwork people, uh, we're very well off. As, you know, Colorado is one example. We just we busted our butts in that game, and I think a lot of people realized it. And you know, fans are going to respect that too. And you know, just get this program going. I think to get a program like this going, like we have, I feel like you you have to kind of have a, a strong guy identity. Back down the car, good feed down the paint, and a one-handed dunk. One of the funnest classes I've taken so far, uh, business management-wise, was with. Professor Maynard, uh, leading high performance teams. And that was just about leadership and different team aspects. And I've always, you know, been into leading teams with sports, but I've never really looked at it as, you know, being a leader in a business type of environment. You know, there's a lot of similarities and uh, kind of drew on experiences from sports to help me on that class a lot. And I, I thought it was very interesting. The car goes right down the lane and lays it in. You can't really you know, take anything for granted because this is something I've wanted to do my whole life now that I'm finally here. Uh, I just, I definitely don't want to be one of those guys that looks back and says, you know, man, I wish I would have worked harder or something like that. Motor is up and good. Especially at a place like Colorado State, you know, it's just a great opportunity and I'm very thankful for it. He goes to the left corner, three try, car. Absolutely. <laughs> Again, it's a look at Jesse Carr, the junior from Ainsworth, Nebraska. Well, TCU coming up on Saturday, and uh, what do you expect from the Frogs? It's a, it's a road game, and, it, and I know you, you, you need to take one or two road games here in the back half of this conference schedule. Well, yeah, you look at um, our strongest opponents in the league appear to be coming into, uh, into Moby Arena, and the, the lower half, we appear to be on the road with the exception of San Diego State, of course, and, and you need to find a way to get road wins. You know, we're 2-6, and 2-5 and five on the road right now. You know, it's been since UTEP since we won on the road, so we need to come and find a way to win. And Texas Christian is really an athletic team, makes plays, making a whole bunch of threes in league play. And with Hank Thorns and Keen Anderson at those guards, Garland Green and athletic wing, and then those inside guys, we had a tough overtime, double overtime game here. I'd expect more of the same in, in uh, Fort Worth. Yeah, by the way, you're going to upset the, the folks down there in Fort Worth. It is TCU. They, in oh, their I'm media sorry. guide on their website, they tell you specifically not to refer them as, as Texas, Texas Christian. Christian. So just going to give you a word of warning there, Tim. Uh, the first game, though, what what you guys do well? What can you take from the first game to help you win down there on Saturday? Well, we have to, you know, close the game out. You know, we didn't yeah. do well at the end of the game last time, and hopefully we've matured. And in the last two teams we've played where we've had leads, we've been able to extend the lead and put them away. Um, but to be a good road team, you just have to do a lot of things well. One thing we have to do is, I think, control that assist to turnover ratio, do a better job taking care of the ball. We've been turning the ball over, I think, too much on the road. Um, and we just have to continue to get to the foul line on a regular basis. Sometimes we kind of quit attacking. Now we start turning it over. We don't get to the foul line. We still make a fair amount of shots and we rebound okay, uh, but we're really going to need to be on the attack and then rock solid defensively. Okay, Tim, best of luck. Thanks, Brian. I'm looking forward to it. It should be a fun run. Four games in 11 know, days, 10 days. We're, we're going. You're going to get a little bit of a break leading into that. So it should be fun. Rams and the Horned Frogs coming up Saturday night from Fort Worth. We'll shift our attention to women's basketball. Head coach Kristen Holt joins us next here on the Rams Report. Stay in touch with the Rams by visiting us on Facebook, YouTube, or follow us on Twitter. You follow us and we'll follow you.